Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I thought I should share some of my experiences of teaching during COVID-19, especially some of the strategies that worked for me and that might be useful to you, considering that this pandemic is not yet over and it might continue the next semester. So our campus closed somewhere in the middle of March. Our students were on spring break and our university decided to extend one more week of spring break. And that gave us time to prepare to move our classes online. And of course the university gave us ample resources, but most of it was left to us to decide what to do to finish the semester. So philosophically thinking about education, the first thing that I thought of is as to what's going on in our students' mind. I mean, suddenly they've been told they can't come back to campus. They are spread all over the country. We don't know what resources they have. Can they access the internet? So my first immediate thought was to reach out to all my students and reassure them that I will make sure that they finish the semester and they succeed. And I was able to do that using the emails that we have in our faculty accounts of each course. So the idea was thinking that they might be panicking at this point was to reassure them that I will be with them throughout until the end of the semester. And I think that's a very important thing to do, to reassure your students that you're there to help them and that you understand that they might have you know, difficult circumstances in which they are trying to study and attend your classes. After that, I decided to fully optimize my website. Now, postcolonial.net has been in existence for about 18 years. It has a lot of materials. It has all my courses on there. So I made sure that everything that I was going to cover was available there. I made sure to change my online syllabus and declare as to what we are likely to do until the end of the semester. Then for the first time, I decided to use Canvas, which is a resource provided by our university, but I only used it in a very limited way. I didn't want my students to have to immediately make a shift to Canvas. So I just used it to collect their assignments so that it was easier for them to go to UNT website and upload it instead of emailing it to me and then tracking whether I received it or not. Beyond that, what I did was I delivered until the end of the semester live online lectures every week at the same time at which they would have met you know, had the classes been face to face. Now, in order to do that, I used a live streaming service called StreamYard, which I use for my YouTube channel as well. And so with that, I was able to run synchronous classes at exactly the time when my class would have otherwise met. And then the students through chat function were able to ask questions as I talked about different topics. But I did one additional thing. Before every live session of the class, I also recorded my views about the reading assignments and the thing about which I was going to have a class the next day and uploaded it to my YouTube channel as an unlisted lecture and then sent a link to my students. So by the time the students came to the live online virtual session, they would have had ample time to at least watch the recorded video. So each lesson then had two components, rather three components, the readings that they already had in digital form, and then my recorded lecture on it, and then the live lecture, which basically answered all their questions. And I'm planning to do that for the fall as well. In fact, I'm in the process of recording lectures for everything that I'm going to be covering in my classes. So to repeat, right, reassuring them that you are there to help them, reassuring them that you will alter your expectations because they are in extraordinary circumstances and making sure to stay in touch with them. 
in my case, there were a couple of students who were panicking, who had thought of dropping the course, and I actually emailed them and contacted them, sent them my WhatsApp number so that they can come and get in touch with me. With me. And I assured them that if they stay in class, I will make sure that they finish, right? So that's really important because the students are not used to not being on campus. And then when they're at home, we don't know what their resources are, what their access to internet and other resources is. And second, using the technologies available. In my case, I was lucky because I had a full-fledged website, but I also made a transition partially to the university provided resources. And then I used my video resources through YouTube, just using a phone like I'm doing today to record my lectures. And then towards the end of the semester, what I also did was I decided to make sure that the students knew that I could do conferences with them one by one, either through Zoom or through you know, uh, the Canvas function of me, uh, you know, meeting with your students. The idea was that if any one of them wanted to talk to me personally, individually about their learning, I should be available. But they also had the option of emailing me about their issues. What I also did was that you know, the final exam, wow. instead of assigning uh, final papers, I decided that we will change it into a final take-home exam. Now, my reason was simple. A final paper in an upper division undergraduate class requires access to a full library, the resources, the librarian, and then the students, you know, they workshop together and talk to each other about it. Now, all of those resources were not available to the students. So in opposition to writing a final paper, what was easier for them was to get a set of five or six questions a week in advance, take their time, write their answers, and submit them through Canvas. Now, please bear in mind that in all these changes, as I do in most of my classes, we put it to vote, right? We ask the students if they vote in favor of doing a take-home exam, or would they rather like a paper? And uh, unanimously, everyone decided to take a take-home exam. So overall, in these trying times, of course, we made mistakes. You know, we could have done things better. What I learned, the most important lesson that I learned was to not to panic, to keep the students' interest front and center, to keep reminding yourself that just as we are overburdened, probably feeling overburdened, of course I wasn't overburdened, the students themselves, because of the circumstances, must be stressed out, must be panicking, right? Must be worried. So part of our job then is to reassure them as the teachers who hold their trust, right? Whose job it is to work with them and guide them to make sure that we remind them constantly that I am there to help them, I'm there to see through. I think that, other than technology and making lectures available, was the biggest learning experience for me to, to think of this problem, this pandemic, from the point of view of the students, what they must be going through, right? Uh, and how overwhelming an experience it could have been and it was for them. So overall, these are some of the strategies and thought processes that worked for me. I'm pretty sure you all have been through that. If you have, as a student or as a teacher, if you have experienced anything different from me or similar from me, I would love to hear your response. Please uh, post it in the comments. If you have some practical ideas that I could use and someone else could also use, please, please post them in the comments because that's the way we can learn from each other. So that's all I have. Um, I hope you all are doing well in this, uh, you know, terrible times and taking care of each other. And uh, I'm grateful for your time. And I will now come back to you with a video on some other topic. Until then, please stay safe. Thank you so much. And peace and love.